When you start talking about art to your average Joe, what's gonna come across his mind? Painting, sculptures, and modern varieties of things and other various objets d'art, right? For some, the theater will come to mind. Operas, music, even movies. There's one thing that's probably not going to come to mind. Video games. Yeah, video games. The digital entertainment enjoyed today by millions of people of all kinds. Since its early beginnings and rise to glory, video games have had a place in the economy as a profitable business, a place in our daily lives as we enjoy it, and so a place in our modern culture. The question is, does it have a place in the art world? I mean, sure, the primary role is to entertain, but the same could be said for theater productions and movies. And yet, it's still possible to entertain and be art. This is what I'm going to delve into. The issue is quite recent and mostly came to light when the narrative element was better fleshed out in video games, so it's quite an open subject. In the past, video games were quite straightforward. Move from left to right and blast everything in your way with little focus to the story. Nowadays, however, plots and characters are usually integral and well fleshed out if they are essential to the game's success. Please keep in mind that due to time restraints and because the subject's pretty big, I won't be able to talk about everything I have on my mind. I'll deal with only a few basic points and hopefully I'll make another more complete video in the future. So for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the abridged version of why I think video games should have an official and publicly recognized place in the art world. Let's start off with a basic analogy. The closest type of art to a video game I can think of would be a movie. Movies are easily a recognized form of art. They are entertaining, they can be beautiful, emotive, and can encapsulate visions. They can essentially be portals to worlds we imagine and bring to life through the powers of cinematography. The basic components of any movie are plot, scenery, actors, special effects, music, the usual. That's without going in the advanced stuff. Therein lies the similarities between movies and video games nowadays. They have their own plots, their characters, the graphics that go with it, and of course, the beaten rhythms. They're about as varied as movies when it comes to genres. You've got the good games, the bad games, as well as the old classic ones and the newer ones. Again, just like movies. For just that, I think there should be a few thoughts given to the place video games might have in the art world as the movie's pioneering cousins in the field of digital arts. I know what I'm doing. This is a shortcut. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. If I had a penny for every time you said that, I wouldn't be needing this gold. At this point, you could just say, it looks good, sounds good, it's interesting, and I may feel things or think about things after playing or experiencing it. But there is one fundamental difference, and it lies in the interactivity. While in movies you sit back and watch, in video games, you're directly involved in what is going on in front of you. This shouldn't however be seen as something that's problematic, it should be seen as something as innovative. Interactivity is to video games as colors would be to a painting. It's a part of the piece that can't be ignored and should be integrated to the whole for the viewer to experience and behold. To be honest, this aversion to the interactivity is unsurprising since it is new, which leads us to the next point, the historical aspect. When movies and cinematography were introduced to the world, they probably were not immediately considered an art, at least not in the same leagues as theaters or others. That's probably because all the other kinds of arts were already well established, and that not much thought was given to this new thing seen as nothing more than entertainment. Eventually, it was seen as a form of art as time passed by, and perhaps the same can be said for video games. The problem now though, is that since movies have been incorporated into the world of art, the original definition of art is brought into question. What exactly is art? The issue is extremely complex, but one thing's for sure, it's really controversial. At any rate, it's not too far-fetched to say that the definition of art is subject to change, at least to what it applies to. Historically speaking, there's always new stuff and ways of thinking coming along that have found a place in the art world. What are the first time the opera was invented? Imagine that the first time, some people singing at the top of their lungs about some of the oddest stories you can think of. What are the theater? Doesn't that mean that as new things come along they might have a place in the art world? So what does it take for anything to be considered art? Well, some will say a lot, and some will say not much. In the end, it's probably not destructive to expand the art world with new things as a testament to our current lifestyle. After all, video games can do what other arts are meant to do, and maybe more so. For example, some artists claim that art is a form of self-expression. Well, video games are so too. People decide to, as a group, 
Express and create a world in which others can venture into and explore it within the limitations set by the game's creators. They also define the way they do so and the way they can or can't interact. This can all be seen as part of the game experience. But then, some people might come and say, okay, but video games weren't made for the sake of art, they were made to make money. And I'll agree with that statement, but it distorts the truth. Think about it, companies do want to sell video games for money, they are companies after all, so they hire a team of artists and talented people and then tell them to make a game to rake in the profit. After that, it's all about the team making the game as best as they can. You can think about it in the following way, companies fund the artists who create the work. The artists themselves probably don't think economically about how they're going to sell the game, their main concern is turning their vision into reality. There are more issues at hand, like further insight on how the art community sees video games, but how some video games are much more artistic than others, and so on and so forth. But remember, my point is that if video games are considered a proper form of art and acknowledged by the masses, then maybe more people engage in playing a video game. Among their many choices, they would add playing a video game as an option if they do have the means and perhaps not see it as a waste of time. Well, that's it for now, stay tuned for another video and until then, thank you for listening, now go enjoy some gaming.